right, everyone, we are going to go ahead and get started here. Welcome to the next presentation in our webinar Wednesdays series. Today, we are going to be discussing reduce and reuse all about a guide to landfill diversion. So just a couple of housekeeping things before we kick this off. Please use the Q&A feature located on the bottom of your screen if you have any questions along the way. We won't be using the chat feature, just the Q&A feature. I will be um, discussing your questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free to put them in the Q&A whenever they come to your mind. But we will be discussing all questions at the end of our presentation today. Also, this webinar is being recorded. If you're interested in coming back and viewing it again or sharing it with your friends and family, it will be up on our website by tomorrow afternoon. And our website is kgmb.org. And also, everyone participating on this webinar today is muted, so you don't need to worry about muting yourself. You are automatically muted. All right, well, welcome. For those of you who haven't joined us before on a webinar, my name is Zoe Jump, and I am the Education Coordinator for Keep Greater Milwaukee Beautiful. And we run these webinars on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month, and we are be, we'll be doing this until October. So thank you for joining us today. For those who haven't heard of Keep Greater Milwaukee Beautiful before, we are a nonprofit organization and we promote sustainability through clean, healthy, and beautiful communities for generations to come. Our biggest two programs are going to be our education programs. We educate all ages on topics such as recycling, composting, energy conservation, water pollution, and trees. And we also do a lot of beautification work um, in the greater Milwaukee area the litter cleanups um, through our Big Clean MKE initiative. If you're interested in learning more about Keep Greater and Milwaukee Beautiful, you can visit our website. So today we are going to be talking about how to divert our waste from a landfill. So it's only fair that we talk about trash. So us as Americans have a trash problem. We make too much trash every single day. The average American makes almost five pounds of trash every single day. And it all ends up in the landfill. And landfills are running out of space. Pretty soon there isn't going to be any room to put our trash. So it's really up to us to change our ways so that our landfills don't um, fill up as fast. And a lot of the things that Americans throw away are going to be glass bottles, jars, plastics. All of these are recyclable. Um, every month, Americans throw out enough of these to fill an entire skyscraper. So even things that should be recycled are ending up in the trash. So just to give you guys a little visual on our trash problem, this is a man named Rob Greenfield, or he refers to himself as the trash man. He decided to wear every single piece of trash he made in a 30-day span. His wife actually made him this suit that could fit 135 pounds of garbage in it which equals to about 4.5 pounds a day. Um, so he didn't do anything special. He just lived the average American lifestyle to see how much trash would really pile up after 30 days. And he didn't just wear the suit at home. You see him on the bottom here. He's on the subway in Manhattan. He's wearing his suit to the grocery store. Um, so it really was just 30 days of him collecting all of his trash and he only used up about 98 pounds of the 135 pounds of trash. But as you can see from the top picture here, it really, really adds up. So now Rob is using this as a way to educate people. He visits schools around New York, he brings his suit with him, and he really shows them how they can reduce their waste. 
So what's the big deal? Why are we preaching to everyone about reducing our waste? One of the main things is that items that end up in the landfill, some of them never decompose. So recyclable items like plastic is the biggest culprit. Plastic takes about 1 million years in the landfill to decompose. Same with glass. Um, plastic and glass might get smaller and smaller, but they're never actually going to disappear out of the landfill. Even something as simple as an aluminum can takes over 100 years to decompose in a landfill. So it's really important that we're diverting those things away. And the solution to this is going to be the six R words. So you might be familiar with the common three R words of race, waste reduction, reduce, reuse, and recycle. But we try and educate people on all six of the R words. Um, and this list isn't just a catchy phrase, it's actually a prioritized list. So it starts with rethink, and then the last thing you should be doing is recycling. So we are going to explore each one of these R words today. We're going to explore rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, rot, and recycle. So the first R word that you should always start with is rethink. A lot of us don't stop and take the time to think when we use day-to-day -day items. Maybe we don't have time, maybe we never really thought to do so. Whatever the reason is, it's really important to start rethinking how you use items, how you buy items, or how often you're mindlessly grabbing things. So you're going to have to ask yourself a couple of questions when you rethink your waste. You're going to ask yourself, do I really need this? Can I use this more than once? Can I recycle this? And is there a better alternative? So one thing that I have been very mindful about in my daily life is when I use paper towels. It is so, so easy to grab a paper towel, to quickly wipe up a spill, or to clean something off. Um, but I've really been trying to know before I go grab that paper towel, I think, do I really need to be using this right now? Can I use a cloth or a sponge instead? So those would be the questions that I would go through. Do I really need this? No, not really. Can I use this more than once? No. Can I recycle this? Nope. And is there a better alternative, which is yes. So if you don't really know where to start, this is a really great place to ask yourself these questions. Um, I would start with making a list. So you would wanna go throughout your day and write down every time you only used an item once. Then once you're done with your day, you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself those questions we just talked about, and then you're gonna research alternatives to those items. So it might seem daunting, but if you just start with one simple step, it's a great first step. Our second R word is refuse. So um, there are so many ways that we can refuse to consume when it comes to waste. And that there are really so many items that are hard to get away from or simply help us help us do our daily life. But then there are things that we really can remove from our life completely. These are gonna be things like styrofoam, disposable utensils or cutlery, disposable straws, produce bags, any type of plastic bag. Those are all a really great place to start refusing, using or buying these things. If this seems too daunting or unachievable, then start with one thing. Start with produce bags and conquer that by some reusable produce bags, and then you can move on to other items on your list. Um, there are a lot of other actions we can stop doing. Uh, a big one for me that I tell a lot of my students here at our center is to stop getting a plastic bag for just a few items. 
I know it makes life a lot easier and really we don't really think that we're just putting small things into a bag but if you are just bagging items at Walgreens for just a bag of chips or a candy bar um, that's really something you don't need so just try and be just conscientious of asking for a bag um, and you can also talk about other people with this after you guys are done with this webinar you can go tell your friends you can tell your family you don't need to be pushy or really bossy but just educating people and starting the conversation is really important and the last thing for refuse is to try it to only buy what you need i am so guilty of this when there is a big bag of oranges at the grocery store that are calling my name and they're on sale for a great deal I'm gonna wanna buy that huge bag of oranges. Now, am I gonna eat all of those oranges just being myself? Absolutely not. So maybe just buying things that earn smaller and you can consume them in the time it needs, especially with perishable items. So a couple of our refuse scenarios. There is something called a refuse challenge that you can take. And these are a couple scenarios that the refuge, the refuse challenge tells you about. So the first one is going to the coffee shop. Everybody needs their morning coffee. We all have our favorite coffee shop wherever we live. And it's really easy to just get a disposable coffee cup every single day and throw it away and not think about it. But it really adds up that you always make sure to keep a travel mug packed with you in your car or in your bag. That way you always have it handy and you don't need that disposable cup. Most cafes even give discounts for this. So not only are you saving money, but you are also being environmentally friendly. The second scenario would be shopping for groceries. The easiest thing that everyone can do to reduce their waste is to carry a reusable shopping bag. You can keep one in your car. They have nice foldable ones that you can put into your purse or your backpack just to keep it really handy. Um, and there's a local organization called Boomerang Bags and they sew reusable bags. So if you're in the market for a reusable bag, I would check out Boomerang Bags. They are located in River West and also Shorewood. So you can shop local while also saving the environment. And our third scenario is when we all go out to lunch. Um, so keeping a glass or plastic container handy for leftovers is so important. When I ask for a container at a restaurant, nine times out of 10, it's going to be styrofoam or a single use plastic. And I know it's kind of weird to keep a plastic or glass container in your purse and whip it out in front of your friends, but if everyone starts to do this, no one is gonna feel weird about doing it. If every single person at your table does it, no one will even notice. Um, a lot of questions have come up about compostable to-go containers and if those are a good option as opposed to styrofoam. And they are a good step in the right direction but keep in mind that compost needs quite a bit of oxygen to break down. So when something is composted, it needs oxygen for it to do its work. And when that compostable to-go container ends up in a landfill, there is no oxygen flow when it's buried deep inside a landfill. So the best bet would be to keep a container with you for your leftovers. Our next R word is reduce. So maybe we went through refuse and refusing isn't quite right for you or it doesn't work for you right now in your lifestyle. That's completely okay. Try reducing instead. The best way to manage waste is to not make as much of it in the first place. There are so many things that we use every single day that we could use less of. It's not just limited to this list. These are just a couple common single-use items 
things like grocery bags, dryer sheets, those disposable coffee cups, even wrapping paper, disposable straws, paper towels, produce bags, cotton balls, and then individually packaged items. So we'll show a couple examples of these on the next slide for you guys. Um, so these are great alternatives to those single use items that we just talked about. So sub a grocery bag out for a canvas bag. Dryer sheets are actually very easy to sub out reusable dryer balls. And you can even add essential oils to your dryer balls to make your clothes smell really good. Um, and disposable coffee cups, that would be that thermal or travel mug. And wrapping paper, there are so many things you can reuse for wrapping paper. You can reuse newspaper, you could reuse an old paper bag. Sometimes it's nice to reuse things instead of buying new wrapping paper. Um, straws, straws are a really hot topic right now and there are so many alternatives to disposable straws. If you weren't a fan of the metal straws, there are now silicone straws, there's glass straws, and there are even bamboo straws. And they're really easy to find. Same with disposable utensils. Um, paper towels, a great swap is a cloth or a microfiber towel. And um, cotton balls. Um, I was guilty of using four to five cotton rounds every single night when I was taking my makeup off. And it wasn't until I discovered reusable bamboo cotton pads that I made a change. So I am guilty of this, it's totally okay. So these are just some photos of those things that I was talking about. These are those dryer balls that you can put your essential oils in. There's something wrapped up in newspaper. These are really cool to go cutlery things that you can hold all of your cutlery. You can bring it to a restaurant, you can bring it to work. Um, and these are really small. They fit inside any sort of bag. Um, this is a good example of reusable produce bags. And then these are those cotton pads that I was talking about. So they come with a little bag. You can easily wash them and just continue to reuse them over and over again. And like I said, these are just a few swaps to single-use items. I'm sure there are much more we could add to this list. Um, another way to reduce is for all my book lovers out there. So I am a avid book lover, and I love the smell of a new book. There's just something about it. I can't get away from it, but I learned that getting a library card is a much more sustainable way to reduce, reduce the things that I'm purchasing. So if any of you guys have a public library card, you have access to any book, any magazine, newspaper, DVD, or CD in the entire Milwaukee County system. And you can visit any branch to pick these up, or you can request an item for pickup online. They also have a really easy app called County Catalog. You can go ahead and find anything in the system on that app just right from your smartphone. Another thing that a lot of people aren't aware of is if you have a library card, you have access to the entire Wisconsin digital library system. So this would be for eBooks and audiobooks. So if you have a Kindle or a tablet and you really love reading eBooks, if you have a library card, you can get them um, free access to it. And there are two apps you can do this through, the Overdrive app and the Libby app. So if you're a book lover, these are the options for you. Another way to reduce is to really think about the clothing you're wearing. Um, fast fashion is such a terrible problem right now. People are simply buying clothes because they're trendy. It, this is what's called fast fashion. So these clothes are not meant to last. Um, they're just kind of meant to last one season. And I mean, we've all done it. Those pair of Crocs sitting in my basement or that jumpsuit that never really fit me right that I bought online. 
So it's really good to think about how and where you're going to use something before you buy it and to buy clothes that are versatile so that you can get more than one use out of them. Um, a big thing is purchase clothing at Goodwill. There are so many gems you can find at Goodwill. You can find a lot of designer brands there. And there are a handful of other secondhand or thrift stores in the local area. So always check there first. If not, you can always borrow clothes from friends or family if it's a one-time occasion. Most of the weddings I've been to these past two years, I just borrowed a dress from a friend. It's a great way to diversify your wardrobe without spending money and you're also reducing your carbon footprint. Um, so this is a quote from Kati Neelis. She's from Green Matters and she stated that the apparel industry remains the second largest industrial polluter, second only to oil. Fast fashion items are often worn less than five times kept for only 35 days and produce over 400% more carbon emissions per item per year. So that really puts it into perspective how terrible fast fashion is for our planet. People are keeping things for 35 days and then throwing them away. So really try and build a more versatile uh, wardrobe. All right, now that we have discussed reduce, we are going to move on to reusing. So reuse is in a very important item of our waste reduction hierarchy. And this is where an item can continue to serve its purpose. It could serve a brand new purpose, or it can be given to someone else to be repurposed. So a couple options for reusing. Um, these are just a couple examples. There are endless possibilities to this, but just something as simple as a glass jar that you might just rinse out and recycle, but instead of that, you could use it as a storage container to hold buttons, loose change, loose leaf tea. You could even paint these jars and you could use them to hold flour or sugar and decorate them and make them cute. Um, old picture frames, as long as there are glass in the frames, you can turn these into dry erase boards or message boards. Holy socks! Before you throw your socks away, socks make such a good cleaning rag. And they also make a really good dusting cloth. You just stick your hand in the sock and you can just dust away. So check that out before you throw away your holy socks. And egg cartons. There's many things we can do to reuse our egg cartons. We could use them as seed trays, as you can see from the picture to your right. They're a great, great way to germinate seeds, and then you can transfer those directly into the ground in the egg carton, as long as it is a cardboard egg carton. Egg cartons are also really fun to make art projects with, with kids. You can turn egg cartons into animals or little critters. Um, the next one for reuse is repair. So you can repair your clothing so you can reuse it again. So maybe mend that button on your sweater instead of throwing it away or giving it away, or fix a broken chair leg, or just repaint your furniture to give it a refresh. And lastly, as we said before in our slide on fast fashion, is buying used before you go out and buy something new, try to find it used first. And it's actually a lot cheaper to find it used to. So some other diversion reusing ideas um, is fix and refurbish. So one of our staff members here at KGMB had this old hutch that she didn't like, it wasn't the right color, didn't really fit with her new apartment. And instead of throwing it away, she decided to repaint it and to turn it into a little cat house for all her furry friends. So just an example of how easy it would be to fix and refurbish something and turn it into something new. You could also add a different color stain to that old dresser. Um, anytime you're turning an unwanted item into something new, you are diverting the waste. 
The second thing is a friend trade night. Once or twice a year, um, around when the seasons change and you really want to go out and buy that new sweater or that new pair of shorts, try and get together with your friends and bring all of your unwanted clothes and swap clothing. It's like you're going shopping, but you're getting all your clothes for free. And anything that's left over, you can just go ahead and donate. If you want to go even bigger than that and organize a swap with your whole neighborhood, you could do it with your school class or you could even do it with your office. Anything to item swap would be totally great. Another thing is to find an established swap site. So if you're not comfortable with organizing your own swap, there is a website called swapmadness.com. You just enter in your zip code and it will tell you all of the established swap sites right near your house that you can um, do an item swap. The fourth thing is having a yard sale. Having a yard sale is such a great way for other people to reuse things you don't want and you also make money. So it's a win-win for you and for the planet. If you have really large or bulky items, you can always sell those for sale online. Websites such as Craigslist, FreeCycle, and LetGo are all really user-friendly and it's really easy to post things on those websites. And lastly is donate your items to a local charity. So there are a couple charities in Milwaukee, um, Goodwill, the Meta House, and the guest house all um, accept donations. If you maybe can't get the item to the charity, the Purple Heart Service Foundation and the Salvation Army do pickups at your home. So you just have to coordinate that with them and they will come and pick up all your unwanted things. So we talked about produce bags, but what about other things we buy at the grocery store? Another way to reduce and reuse is to buy food from bulk bins. So purchasing food in the bulk section of the grocery store eliminates all of that unnecessary packaging. You're not getting a jar, you're not getting a bag, you're not getting a box. If you bring your own container, you can just put everything into your own container. Um, so stores like Outpost, Whole Foods, and Fresh Time all have very, very large bulk departments. It's so fun to go there and see all the things they offer. They have every kind of loose leaf tea, any spice you could dream of, um, different types of flowers, different types of sugars, every single nut in the world, grains, beans, and even things like snacky foods like dried fruits and candy. So if you haven't ever been to the bulk department of a grocery store, I would highly, highly recommend it. And now we're gonna move on to our fifth R word, which is recycling. Recycling is a great way of reusing by turning your old trash into something new. So the city of Milwaukee's residential landfill diversion rate um, was 25.3% in 2017. So they were diverting almost a fourth of our waste from the landfill by recycling it. So it's really important if you're not recycling, you really should start it's just a very easy way to divert your waste. But before you start recycling, you need to know how to recycle right. So always check your local recycling guidelines before putting any items into your recycling bin. If you live in the city of Milwaukee, you can go to city.milwaukee.gov slash recycles. And there you will find this graphic right here, which is gonna show you all of the things that you can and cannot recycle. So the things you're gonna want in that recycling bin are going to be aluminum and steel cans, as long as they are empty and rinsed out. 
You don't want any food waste in them. You can put cartons in your recycling bin. These are food and beverage cartons, as long as they are empty and you can put the cap back on. Glass is always accepted. Try not to smash it into your recycling bin. Try and keep it as together as possible. And always remember to empty and rinse out your glass containers. Paper, all kinds of paper is accepted in your recycling bin as long as it's clean and dry. And then plastic. Plastic is a little harder. Only number one plastics, number two plastics, and number five plastics are accepted in the city of Milwaukee. So always make sure to look at that triangle on the bottom of your plastic container to tell you if it's um, recyclable. And these again should be emptied and rinsed out with the cap on. So you can access this guide on the city of Milwaukee website. And they also have a whole list, uh, a recycling directory of all the things you can and cannot recycle. So make sure you check that out. The one thing that you do not want in your recycling bin ever, ever, ever is going to be plastic film. So that's going to be things like shopping bags, Ziploc bags, bread bags, um, the casing around 24 water bottle packs, and any sort of plastic wrapping from online shopping. Instead of putting these in your recycling cart, you can put them into a collection box at your local grocery store. Target, Pick and Save, Sendix, Walmart, even Kohl's accepts plastic film. And you can also drop it off at the KGB office. Our last R word for the day is rot. And rot is just a cute word for composting. So when you put all of your fruit and vegetable scraps into your compost bin, it rots. And that's how that fits in to our six R words. Some of you might recognize this fact from our previous composting webinars, but 23% of our current landfill space in the United States is made up of food waste and yard trimmings, which are things we could easily, easily put into our compost bin or our compost pile. And they could rot and then we could use them as um, fertilizer for our soil. So really easy to get into composting. If you don't have the space to compost but you're still interested in diverting your food waste, you can sign up for a residential compost service. This is through um, Compost Crusaders or there's also a company called Kirby's. It costs roughly five dollars a week depending on what size bin you want. And it works just like a recycling or a garbage pickup. They will just pick that up curbside. So even if you don't have the space for composting or you're not interested in it, you can still sign up for one of these purchases. If you are already composting or you just started composting, this is a really easy cheat sheet to get you started. This goes through all the things that you can compost and that you can't compost. And it also includes a little bit of a help list in case your compost bin maybe stops or goes wrong. So you can um, screenshot this slide for an easy compost cheat sheet. And if you're interested in learning all about basic backyard composting or small space composting, we do have two webinar recordings on our website that go into great detail about this topic. So I will have that link up for you guys on the screen in just a second. So what else can you do? Maybe you have conquered the six R's. You're already rethinking your purchases. You're already refusing single-use plastics. You donate your items. You reuse things. What else can you do to make an impact? Um, and one of the biggest things is support companies who are also committed to the six R's. I think it's really important to give profit to companies that are committed to the environment, um, support companies that follow these six R's we're talking about. So I'm going to highlight just a few companies that I personally like to support. And the first one is 
Seventh Generation. Seventh Generation is a line of cleaning products, and they um, have eco-friendly cleaning products that are free of harmful toxins and chemicals. This company was also recently topped by Forbes as the annual Best for the Environment list, which highlights companies that go above and beyond standard green practices. A lot of seventh generation plastics are made out of plastic that they collected from the ocean, recycled plastic. Um, so when you're in the aisle at Target and you're looking for a new cleaner and there's seven other options, I would highly recommend checking out seventh generation. Another company that is doing really good for the environment is Lush Cosmetics. Lush is dedicated to not using packaging. So they are famous for their solid shampoo bars. And these just look like soap bars, but they're shampoo bars. So you're not buying shampoo in a plastic container. You just have it as a solid shampoo bar and they last forever. I'm telling you, you guys, they last months and months and you don't need to worry about plastic packaging. Lush also offers free products to their customers who come in that bring them their empty packaging. So not only are you helping the environment, but you can get some free stuff by shopping at Lush. Thirdly is Patagonia. Patagonia's corporate philosophy and what all they stand by is 100% for the planet. So they do everything they can to go green. Um, every year they pledge $10 million of their sales to go to grassroots environmental groups that are dedicated to improving our planet. So they're giving money to different environmental groups. And they have also been using recycled plastic bottles to make their clothing since 1993. They were actually the first retailer to figure out how to turn trash into clothing. And they put all of their statistics and their numbers on their website. They just uploaded their spring 2020 statistic and 80% of their stock in spring of 2020 was made with recycled polyester. So they are very dedicated. If you're in the market for a new fleece or a new jacket, highly recommend checking them out. And lastly is eBay. Now that Amazon is so huge, a lot of people have forgotten about good old eBay. eBay made it possible for people to exchange and reuse goods instead of throwing them away. So they are increasing the lifespan of these products and they're also keeping them out of the landfills. eBay also partners with the USPS to ensure the green supply when it comes to all of their shipping items as well. So check out eBay, give it a shot. And then our last is to rebuy. Rebuying refers to buying products with recycled content. So this means you're completing the circle of making those old materials into new ones. It's great that you recycle, but a next great step is to support the recycling industry and buy things made out of recycled material. This could be as simple as buying office paper made out of recycled paper instead of buying um, office paper made out of virgin material. Some other resources if you guys are interested in doing more research on this or want to learn more. Earth 911 has a all-inclusive recycling database. You can enter in anything and they will tell you where to donate it, ways to reuse it, how to refurbish it, how to recycle it. So if you ever have a question, check out earth911.com. They should point you in the right direction of how to reuse or reduce your item. Another thing is TED Talks. If you are interested in hearing um, things about the environment, things about waste reduction and landfills, check out TED Talks. They have some really cool resources of people talking about going completely zero waste. Some of them can fit all of their trash into a mason jar. So that's really cool to see. They have people talking about thrifting, 
They talk a lot about plastic in the ocean. So if you're interested in learning more, check out a TED Talk. If you are an artist or you're into arts, I would highly recommend checking out Chris Jordan. Chris Jordan is an artist who um, uses statistics of how much waste we make to make his art. So this pink photo on the right hand side is one of Chris, Jordan, Chris Jordan's work in his Running the Numbers series. And this picture depicts 400,000 plastic bottle caps. 400,000, which is equal to the number of plastic bottles used in the United States every single minute. So there are 400,000 bottle caps in this photo. So that's just in the US as well. So really think about that. His photos are really, really cool. They really put things into perspective. I would definitely recommend checking him out. And then KGMB webinars. As I said before, we have been running webinars on the second and the fourth Wednesday of every month. Some of the topics we've discussed is recycling do's and don'ts. We did one all about basic backyard composting, and we did one all about simple small space composting. So if you are interested in learning more about recycling or composting, you can find those recordings on our website, kgmb.org slash webinars. Highly recommend going and checking those out as well. And if you like this webinar and you're interested in more educational videos on environmental topics, you can go ahead and register for our upcoming webinars. We do have one more this June on June 24th, and that is our Sustainable Summers webinar. So June 20th is the first day of summer, so we are gonna celebrate by teaching people how to live sustainably this summer. July 8th, we have another basic backyard composting. So if you missed our first one, you can tune into that. And then July 22nd, we are going to be talking about how to dispose of electronic and hazardous wastes. If you guys are interested in more information, go ahead and follow KGB and also Recycle for Good Milwaukee on Facebook, or you can visit our website. All right, now is the time for questions. So I am going to pull up this Q&A feature. And let's see here. I see a couple of questions. All right, do you have to put the cap back on the food and beverage container? So this is with recycling, I'm assuming. Um, we say keep like with like. So if your plastic bottle has a plastic cap, you can put that cap back on the plastic bottle and it'll all be recycled together. But if you are recycling a glass salsa jar and it has a metal cap, then you don't wanna put that metal cap back on that container. You just wanna recycle the glass. So keep light caps with light caps. All right, what do you recommend for reusable bags, refusing single-use cups, et cetera, in the midst of this pandemic, where many restaurants, grocery stores, and so on, are not permitting shoppers to bring their own? Um, I have actually been doing a lot of shopping at Aldi's for my grocery shopping because they don't bag your things and they allow you to still bag your groceries in your reusable bag. So I have really been supporting them um, because they are still letting us bring in reusable bags. But if you don't have an Aldi near you, there's really no way to get around it. I would always, always try and just ask for a paper bag. That way you can reuse that bag. But honestly, the pandemic has been so bad for our single-use plastics. I feel like we were making such a strive with people bringing their own cups and bringing their own straws. 
So it's going to take a lot of work to get back to where we were before, especially with single use things at restaurants right now. There's really just, there's no easy answer to that question, but thank you for asking. Um, if we recycle or compost our vegetables and yard waste, where do we take it or drop it off? So you can actually find compost drop-off sites in Wisconsin. A lot of these sites are going to be out in rural areas. Um, there aren't a lot of free drop-off sites in Milwaukee anymore. Compost Kids used to do free compost drop-off, but some of their sites have closed down. So just do your research and you can find places um, out in the country maybe that accept drop-offs or else you can schedule those compost pickups. I'd highly recommend you check out our small space composting webinar because we dived into all the places you can take your finished compost. All right, does anyone have any other questions at all? Here. Okay, well, if no one has any other questions, um, I'm always available on my email. It's just my first name, Zoe, Z O E, at K G M B dot org. I would be happy to answer any questions you have via email if anything comes up. Make sure you check out our webinars coming up. And thank you guys so much for attending, and I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.